So coming into using Construct 3, the only thing I really knew for sure about it was the fact that you could make a game without writing any code. Usually that wouldn't really interest me, but I thought it would be fun to at least test it out and see how quickly I could make a platformer. Before even showing you the game that I made, I did use this asset pack from Vexed on itch.io so all the art belongs to that person and I give them all the credit because it looks amazing and it was a lot of fun to use. So I'll do a quick playthrough of my platformer. The general idea is that there's a snake and a chicken. You use the arrow keys to move when you hold the space button you control the snake and you can't control you have to control both players across each level so when I'm holding space I'm moving the snake and we use the different abilities to get the chicken into the sun. So the gimmick is that I can't get everywhere as just the chicken. I have to control the snake, bring the snake over, but the trick is that when I let go of the control of the snake, it freezes as a solid, and I can use the snake as a platform to get the chicken across. So here, the chicken can't make it across the gap without the snake, but if I control the snake, then I can jump across, freeze by letting go of the space bar, and then take the chicken across. This is definitely my favorite level of the very short game. There's four levels, and this one's my favorite because the falling speed of the chicken is a little bit less than the snake, so I have to put the chicken on this platform first, then take control of the snake, and I'm gonna fall, but I have to use the chicken to catch the snake this time. And then get the snake to this platform, then we just have to let the chicken die, and then bring the chicken back. I guess I didn't need to go to the platform to begin with. Take control of the snake, and do the same thing as in the other levels bring the chicken across to the sun. This level is not too hard, but it can be a little tricky just because of the, the jump timing. But you basically put the snake below the jump, let the chicken fall down to reset its jump, and then it's just a matter of trial and error to get it into the hole. That's the end screen. You can still bounce around as a chicken, but nothing really happens. Wow, you're awesome. Thanks for playing. So in order to create a platformer, I'll just go into one of my one of my levels here. If I was going to create a platformer, let's pretend this wasn't already here. You just go through a, a flow of adding an object. So insert new object. Then you find one that matches what you think you want. Usually it's probably going to be a sprite. Once I have a sprite and I add it to the game, let's just imagine that I fill it with something. So we have the sprite then everything gets a not much more complicated but just a little bit more complicated we add behaviors there's this intuitive list of behaviors you just kind of look through and find one you want platform is what you'll use for for the player characters and the i guess the enemies for a platform game once i have a behavior then i can add conditional things called events so just to show you these are all the events that i have for this whole game so it, it never got very complicated I have, yeah, a total of 10 events. Own space pressed and platform is enabled for player one. This is essentially the logic for switching control of the players. Uh, it's the same event just swapped for player one and player two. We disable player one, we enable player two, and then we change uh, whichever player we're leaving, we change to a solid. And that's how I, that's how I basically switch between the snake and the chicken. When player one, the chicken, connects or collides with the sun sprite, then go to the next layout, which represents the levels. Uh, player one, when platform speed is greater than zero, set mirror. That's actually, I think that's an event that I'm not even using anymore because I'm actually checking for the mirrored stuff down here with the vector X, so I could probably remove that. But So you can see I created this whole platform game with just a couple behaviors and a, a few events. Nothing very complicated at all. I did use the free version of the tool, and I'm not sure if it would be possible to make a full commercial game without the full license. The two big obstacles I noticed in my project was a limit on how many events that you could create, and no functionality existing for grouping together different objects. Let's say you had 40 instances of the same enemy within a level. Any events that you define for interactions between the player and an enemy would have to be defined for each enemy individually. Even if you're willing to spend the time connecting all of those events to each enemy, you will eventually run out of events anyway. As a quick disclaimer, I only spent a couple hours with Construct, so there may be ways around this that I'm not aware of, but to me, those were huge limiting factors. Overall, I did have a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the tool, so I can definitely see where it would be worth the yearly subscription to some people, especially if you're not interested in coding. 
I will probably return to Construct 3 in the future for small projects, quick prototypes, things like that. And when I do, I'm excited to learn more about the functionality because I'm sure that there is a ton out there that I didn't even touch on at all. If you enjoy watching this video, remember to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next one.